Hello to the world and to the kingdom citizens. I greet you in the precious holy name of Yahshua Messiah, Yahshua HaMashiach, who said in this word, John 8 and 32, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Hi, I'm Dr. John Curry, Ambassador Pan-African, and welcome to the Embassy of the Kingdom of Heaven on Earth. If you want to follow this podcast, please subscribe to JC Global, Embassy TV One, ring the bell, and hit the thumbs up button. I want to present to you 12 ways Africa civilized the world. 12 ways Africa civilize the world. I think this is a great clip and I think you're going to benefit strongly for it. All we have to do is to realize as black folks, we was here before everybody else. And let us take a look at these 12 ways Africa civilized the world. Welcome to this episode. Here are 12 ways Africa civilized the world. Speech is taken for granted today, but it goes without saying that this was probably the most innovative development in human history, for without it, there just would not be any form of civilization at all. The first words spoken by humans were spoken by Africans. Scientist Q.D. Atkinson, formerly of the School of Anthropology at Oxford University, argues that vocal language must have arisen in our species about 50,000 years ago. This conclusion is supported by genetic, archaeological, paleontological, and much other evidence suggesting that language emerged somewhere in sub-Saharan Africa during the Middle Stone Age, according to Atkins. In 1999, Archaeology magazine reported that the earliest Egyptian hieroglyphs date back to 3400 BC, which challenged the commonly held belief that early logographs, pictographic symbols representing a specific place, object or quantity, first evolved into more complex phonetic symbols in Mesopotamia. Who were these original Egyptians? The Greek historian Herodotus described the cultures of the Black Sea shores as Egyptians by race and pointed out that they had black skins and kinky hair. Apollodorus, the Greek philosopher, describes Egypt as the country of the black-footed ones, and the Latin historian Ammianus Marcellinus, as late as 330 AD, after numerous foreign invasions of Egypt, still wrote that the men of Egypt are mostly brown or black with a skinny, desiccated look. In his book Egypt, British scholar Sir E. A. Wallace Budge says, the prehistoric native of Egypt, both in the Old and in the New Stone Ages, was African, and there is every reason for saying that the earliest settlers came from the South. He further states, there are many things in the manners and customs and religions of the historic Egyptians that suggests that the original home of their prehistoric ancestors was in a country in the neighborhood of Uganda and Punt, the present-day Somalia. Greek historian Diotero Sicilius in Bibliotheca Historica, or Library of History, speaks about the great piety of the Kushites, their high favor with the gods, and adds the fascinating legend that they were the founders of Egyptian civilization, invented writing, and had given the Egyptians their religion and culture. This is the papyrus of Maherpi, dated to 1400 BC. That's about 3,500 years ago. The papyrus was found buried in a royal tomb in the Valley of the Kings in Egypt. The mummy in the tomb was unwrapped in March 1901, revealing a black man with woolly hair. The papyrus in question was the Egyptian Book of Going Forth by Day. The earliest known surgery was performed in Egypt around 2750 BC. The Ebers Papyrus, dated to 1550 BC, is full of incantations and potent applications meant to fight disease spiritually and also includes 877 medicinal prescriptions. Homer, in the 8th century BC, remarked in the Odyssey, In Egypt, the men are more skilled in medicine than any of humankind, and the Egyptians were skilled in medicine more than any other arts. The Greek historian Herodotus visited Egypt around 440 BC and wrote extensively of his observations of their medicinal practices. Pliny the Elder also wrote favorably of them in historical review. Hippocrates, 
known today as the Father of Medicine, studied at the Temple of Amenhotep and acknowledged the major contribution of ancient Egyptian medicine to Greek medicine. Jericho is recognized today as the oldest city in the world by mainstream scholars and researchers and is dated to 11,000 BC. It is also the first known city to be built with a surrounding wall. According to researchers, the city was founded by a group of settlers called the Natufians. The Natufian communities were the builders of the first Neolithic uh, settlements in the region, which are described as the very earliest in the world. So, who were these Natufians? Well, in a major study conducted by American anthropologist Charles Lauren Brace, Professor Emeritus at the University of Michigan's Department of Anthropology, the small Natufian sample falls between the Niger-Congo group and the other samples used. This placement suggests that there may have been a sub-Saharan African element in the makeup of the Natufians. Here at the African History Station, we, you know, um, whenever we come across the maybes and could have beens and probably we simply take that as an affirmative. Other scholars, such as Christopher Everett, a distinguished research professor at UCLA in the United States as well, contend that the Natufian language originated probably in the area of Egypt, the Sahara, Horn of Africa, or Sudan. The invention of mathematics is placed firmly in African prehistory. The oldest known mathematical object is the Lebombo bone, discovered in the Lebombo Mountains of Swaziland and dated to approximately 35,000 BC. It consists of 29 distinct notches cut into a baboon's fibula. Also, prehistoric artifacts discovered in Africa and dated 35,000 years old suggest early attempts to quantify time. The Ishango bone, found near the headwaters of the Nile River in northeastern Congo, may be over 20,000 years old and consists of a series of tally marks carved in three columns running the length of the bone. Common interpretations are that the Ishango bone shows either the earliest known demonstration of sequences of prime numbers or a six-month lunar calendar. Also, pre-dynastic Egyptians of the 5th century BC pictorially presented geometric designs. Numeral systems have been many and diverse, with the first known written numerals created by Egyptians in Middle Kingdom texts, such as the Rhine's mathematical papyrus. The earliest uses of mathematics were in trading, land measurement, painting and weaving patterns and the recording of time. More complex mathematics did not appear until about 3000 BC, where the Egyptians and Babylonians began using arithmetic, algebra and geometry for taxation and other financial calculations, for building and construction, and for astronomy. Archaeological evidence has suggested that the ancient Egyptian counting system had origins in Africa south of the Sahara. Also, fractal geometry designs, which are widespread among African cultures south of the Sahara, are also found in Egyptian architecture and cosmological science according to researcher Ron Eglash. The Africans of Egypt were the first to develop a 365-day, 12-month calendar. It was a stellar calendar created by observing the stars. The oldest known mine in the archaeological record is the Lion Cave in Swaziland, which radiocarbon dating shows to be about 43,000 years old. Much later on, the Africans of Egypt mined malachite, Quarries for turquoise and copper were also found at various other Nubian sites. The gold mines of Nubia were among the largest and most extensive in the world and are described by the Greek author Diodorus Sicilius. He mentions that fire setting was one method used to break down the hard rock holding the gold. They crushed the ore and ground it to a fine powder before washing the powder for the gold dust. Iron smelting is a form of extractive metallurgy. Its main use is to produce a metal from its ore. This includes production of silver, iron, copper, and other base metals from their ores. Smelting uses heat and a chemical reducing agent to decompose the ore, driving off other elements as gases or slag and leaving just the metal behind. Regarding the history of iron smelting, the very latest research has overturned long-held conventional academic wisdom 
which was that the Iron Age started in Southwest Asia in 1500 BC and spread to the rest of the world, including Africa from there. Evidence of iron smelting in Africa that is at least 500 years older stands this conventional wisdom on its head. In a village square in Leja, located about 15 kilometers south of the university town of Kusuka in southeastern Nigeria, lies what appears to be the oldest iron smelting site in the world. Arranged in crescent shapes with mound in the middle across a wide sitting area, a hundred or bits of smelting debris of slabs recently carbon dated to about 2000 BC by a team of archaeologists and other experts from the University of Nigeria in Sukha and Oxford University in the United Kingdom with other academic observers from some of the 300 plus universities in Nigeria. Even the production of steel began in Africa. According to Peter Schmidt and Donald H. Avery, in addition, very early instances of carbon steel were found to be in production around 2,000 years before the present in northwest Tanzania, based on complex preheating principles. These discoveries are significant for the history of metallurgy. The history of law links closely to the development of civilization. Stephanus of Byzantium, who is said to represent the opinions of the most ancient Greeks, says that Africa's southern Sahara, which the Greeks called Ethiopia, was the birthplace of law. According to him, Ethiopia was the first established country on the earth, and the Ethiopians were the first who introduced the worship of the gods and who established laws. Ancient Egyptian law, which is derived from African or Ethiopian law, is dated to as far back as 3000 BC and was based on the concept of maps and was characterized by social equality and impartiality. Aristotle added, Egyptians are reputed to be the oldest of nations but they have always had laws and a political system. Yet again, as it was in Egypt, is as it was in Ethiopia, the ancient father and mother of Egypt. The pyramid texts from the African Empire of Egypt are the oldest known religious texts in the world, dated to about 2400 BC. Greek historian Georgius Cecilius traveled to Egypt around 60 BC. His travels in Egypt took him well below the Sahara, and he wrote about the Ethiopians, the Greek term for all Africans in South of Egypt. They further write that it was among them that people were first taught to honor the gods and offer sacrifices and arrange processions and festivals and perform other things by which people honor the divine. For this reason, their piety is famous among all men and the sacrifices among the Ethiopians are believed to be particularly pleasing to the divinity. The Maritime Jade Road, established in 2000 BC, is the earliest known international trading network and was established by the indigenous peoples of Taiwan and the Philippines and later expanded throughout Southeast Asia. The network operated for 3,000 years, ending around the 11th century AD. So, who were these indigenous Taiwanese and Filipinos establishing international shipping and trade networks 1,200 years before the birth of Greece? Ancient Chinese reports speak about them as being people with dark skin, short and small body stature, frizzy hair, also known as nappy hair. Regarding the Philippines, research scientist Dr. Howard McCoggan tells us that the Negrito groups are considered to be the earliest inhabitants of the Philippines. In 1825, Arnold Herman Heeren, professor of history and politics in the University of Göttingen in Germany and an expert in the economic interpretation of history, published in his great work, Eden Uber, that it was among these ancient black people of Africa and Asia that international trade was first developed. Philosophy is the study of general and fundamental problems, such as those connected with reality, existence, knowledge, values, reason, mind, and language. Philosophy is distinguished from other ways of addressing such problems by its critical, generally systematic approach and its reliance on rational argument. Philosophy in Africa has a rich and varied history, dating from pre-dynastic Egypt. Arguably central to the ancients was the conception of ma'at, which roughly translated refers to justice, truth, or simply that which is right. One of the earliest works of political philosophy was the maxims of Ptahotep, which were taught to Egyptian schoolboys for centuries 
Another well-known philosopher was Amenakt, active in the 12th century BC. Ancient Egyptian philosophers made extremely important contributions to Greek philosophy and the later religious philosophy of Christianity and Islam. Ancient Egyptian philosophy was credited by the ancient Greeks as being the beginning of philosophy. Several of the ancient Greek philosophers regarded Egypt as a place of wisdom and philosophy. Isocrates, born in 436 BC, states that all men agree that the Egyptians are the healthiest and most long-lived of men, and then for the soul, they introduce philosophy's training a pursuit which has the power not only to establish laws, but also to investigate the nature of the universe. He declared that Greek writers traveled to Egypt to seek knowledge. One of them was Pythagoras, who was first to bring to the Greeks all philosophy, according to Isocrates. In Plato's Timaeus, Socrates quotes the ancient Egyptian wise men when the Greek lawmaker Solon traveled to Egypt around 550 BC to learn philosophy, where he was told by the African priests, O oh, Solon, Solon, you Greeks are children in the mysteries. The oldest art object in the world, a series of tiny drilled snail shells about 75,000 years old, were discovered in a South African cave by researcher Tim Radford. Also, in a spectacular discovery in 2011, archaeologists uncovered a 100,000-year-old workshop holding the tools and ingredients with which Africans mix some of the first known paint known to man. According to the New York Times, these artisans had stones for pounding and grinding colorful dirt enriched with a kind of iron oxide to a powder known as ochre. This was blended with a binding fat of mammal bone marrow and a dash of charcoal. Traces of ochre were left on the tools and samples of the reddish compound were collected in large shells where the paint was liquefied, stirred and scooped out with a bone spatula. In a report published in the journal Science, the researchers called this evidence of early conceptual abilities a benchmark in the evolution of complex human cognition. And the BBC adds, the mere fact that paints are being manufactured in a systematic way is indicative of a level of advanced thinking. It would have required a high degree of planning to bring together all of the elements of the kits. Remember, this is 100,000 years ago in Southern Africa. There is simply no comparable find of anything approaching that sort of complexity which is of such incredible antiquity anywhere else on Earth. This was a period of history mainstream scientists refer to as the Stone Age. Perhaps it was the Stone Age in Europe and Asia and elsewhere, but was it in Africa? We asked because less than 5% of the continent has been subjected to major archaeological research. This early paint manufacturing in Africa was the oldest known technological process to have been undertaken by humans. Manufacturing of paint is something most countries do not do even today, and they have to import their paint. Even in Africa, only a few countries like South Africa, Nigeria and Egypt manufacture paint. Who knows what else Africans were manufacturing 100,000 years ago that's now lost or buried in the ruins of antiquity. For more than any pyramid or great temples or cities of African history, these findings of Africans combining chemicals and compounds to manufacture paint 100,000 years ago, a full 90,000 years before our oldest written records, is the single scientific discovery that makes Africa the indisputable cradle of world civilization. So there we have it. Speech, writing, cities and architecture, mathematics, mining of minerals, iron smelting, religion, law, international trade, philosophy, and art. Where would our world be today without these early advancements? These fundamentals upon which our modern civilization is built. And what's left for us to say today but, thank you, Mother Africa. There could be no us without you. Thank you for watching this episode. Remember to like, comment and subscribe and look out for the next one on Africa's Great Civilizations.